This week's episode is sponsored by the Birmingham Hotel. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Like I said, I was more well off than all the other kids because what my dad did and what, what he was involved in, you know, and um, he came he came to the UK first and I think he, he was still doing what he was doing, selling drugs, getting into in, into um, gangs shit and um, yeah, from there he was like using his money, I guess now growing older, he used his money to send back to the gangs in Jamaica. Um, for drugs, arms, or what, what they was doing, you know. He was still involved um, with the gang culture and with doing, what, doing what he was doing, and um, um, yeah, didn't end up getting getting murdered. Um, like I said, when I was 13 years old, and um, then yeah, from there, he's like, you have to be like man of the house, and I was like, time to grow up. You can't. He's no longer a kid no more, you know. And my manager phoned me like three weeks after. He's like, uh, the youth is just called. Do you want to fight Nate Diaz in uh, May? But this was you know, the first fight, and I was like, I was like, Nate. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, perfect. Let's get it done. Mm-hmm. Does your mum watch your fights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or did she, she watch she, them? She, 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 watched, she, watched, she watched the last one, you know, because. Um, um, what did she say? Oh man, she's a Jamaican woman. Yeah, she's Jamaican. Man, um, she's, like, she's like proper, like, yeah. like Jamaican, Jamaican, yeah. you know. Um, she was watching it. So when I, when I, when I got rocked by, by Diaz, <laughs> I like, when I came back, I was like, Mom, what, what, did, what did you do? Like, what, what happened when I, she's like, I opened the window, I started screaming, help! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom, you got it. So yeah, I started screaming, help, help, uh-huh. blah, blah, blah. Like, mm-hmm. My heart was in my throat. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Leon Edwards. How How's are you, brother? I'm very well, brother. How are you? Congratulations on your last fight. It was good. It was a big fun, but yeah, thank you. Eight Diaz, massive name in UFC. One of the biggest. He's been around for forever, basically, but great victory. Yeah. Which we'll touch on that. Your nine, nine one, nine one nine, street, is that? Nine, nine. Can't be loud if I go ten, you know, but yeah. yeah fuck it, there's <laughs> well count ten. Counting was hard, ten, yeah. ten in a row, so it's a... It's a it's a great position position to be in, you know. Um, in one of the hardest division in the sport, the welterweight division. So, to rack up nine wins, he said something, you know. Um, I think in history of the promotion, is Usman, George St. Pierre, and me for the longest win streak in the in the UFC, you know, in the division. So, um, I'm definitely proud of myself, you know. And you should be. Thank you. It's phenomenal. Honestly, I take my hat off to you. I watched the fight. I'm a big fan of Nate Diaz as well. Yeah. But obviously, you've got to support the local lad, innit? it? Well, not yeah. local, I'm from fucking Glasgow. Fuck but, it, you know, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> <fuck it. laughs> um, mm. But I always go back to the start of my guest, brother. Yeah. Where you grew up and how it all began. Um, For me, I, I was born in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica. Um, uh, Most of my childhood was, was, was based in Jamaica, you know. Um, came to the UK when I was like 13, 13 years old. Um, nah, but less than that, probably about 10 years old. 10 years old. Um, went, to, went, went to school here. Um, grew up here in Birmingham, like I said, and um, yeah, it was a, a wild, wild childhood. Um, lost, my, lost my dad when I was 13 years old. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's many different chapters to my life, yeah. you know. So it all just depends. Yeah, how, how, how I wanted to be told. What was school like in Jamaica? Um, from what I remember, it, it, it was good. It was good, you know. Um, like like in normal school. Um, obviously the environment that I was in 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 in, in Jamaica it was. Um, poverty, you know, you can you, you can call it poverty. I was, I was brought up in a a wooden house with a zinc roof, you know, and um, um, my dad was the the leader of of a gang in in the area that where, where where I lived, and yeah, that that's that's that that's how it all, all started from that, and just coming from there to where I am now is, like I say, it's an amazing journey, and. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, like I said, I'm proud of myself and what I've achieved, you know. You should be proud. This is only the beginning for what's to come as well. Yeah. So seeing you stealing like wooden huts and stuff, was that just the norm? Was there any electricity or anything? Yeah, 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 for sure. We're, we're legit, like, um, basically, like, what, what, like one wooden um, shack thing. Um, in that wooden shack, with your bedroom, your living room, you know, down. Everything is in that one one shack, you know. Um, but like I said, I was more well off than all the other kids because what my dad did and what, what he was involved in. You know, and um, he came. He came to the UK first, and I think he, he was still 
doing what he was doing, selling drugs, getting into in, into um, gangs, shit, and um, yeah, from there he was like using his money. I guess now growing older, use using his money to send back to the gangs in Jamaica um, for drugs, arms, or what what they was doing, you know. And um, yeah, from there, like I said, I came to the UK. For, I think it brought me, my mom, and my brother to the UK for a better life, you know, to give us a better opportunity at life. Did he see that, that there was not much opportunities in Jamaica to then try and give you a better life here? Yeah, 100%. I, I, I believe that that was his thinking, you know. Um, I never ever got the chance to like, sit down and talk to him and see what's the reason he did it. But now, me being a dad, I, I, I guess that was his reason. He realised it was a, a dangerous environment to have his kids in. Um, and the UK was a better opportunity for you to get a, get a better life for yourself and for, for your family. And that's what he did. And, you 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 also have to respect that you know to um to to be a man and to came to to the UK not forget about his family back in Jamaica and still think about him and brought him to the UK for a better life yeah you have to respect that you know yeah. did you did you know the gang culture then that your dad was involved in yeah. at a young age or were you oblivious to it no nah, I, I I knew exactly who he was you know in in, in the area um because everyone knew, knew, everyone knew, knew who he was, you know. So was, as, as a kid, it's like, is that cool? Is that cool? But it's like, your dad is the main man in the area. It's like, you got more privilege than other kids, you know, yeah. in, 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 in shit you can do and can't do and um, what, what you get for gifts and shit. And uh, I was getting like remote control cars and bikes and in, in you know, where I'm from, it's like weird, you know, to get that yeah. as a kid. And I was getting all that, PS, I had like a PS1 and everything, you know. So... Like I said, he made the sacrifices. He did what he needed to do with the, with the opportunity, opportunities that he had and he did the best he could, you know. So when you come here at 13, how did your dad still end up active from Jamaica to, was it Birmingham? London. 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 Yeah, Croydon. So how how yeah. did he end up active then? Oh, what do you mean? Just from, like, still gang culture? Yeah, yeah, he was still involved. Was involved with Yardies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was, was still involved, um, with the gang culture and with doing what doing what he was doing and um um yeah didn't end up getting getting murdered um like I said when I was thirteen years old and um then yeah from there it's like you have to be like a man of the house and I was like time to grow up you can't he's no longer a kid no more you know then so yeah like I said of I understand the sacrifices they made you know I've also been involved in similar situations and. I can't understand, understand his thinking, you know. So, how does that play effect on you now? The, the death of your father. At, we'll go back to when you were thirteen. How does that play effect on you? Did you, because I interview a lot of criminals, yeah. as you know, yeah. like the majority go down the same route. Yeah, prisons, does it, does addictions. It, yeah, you've not. You've used that as fire as fuel to then basically that, become a leader yourself, but yeah. in a positive role. At, at thirteen, I, I'll say from like thirteen to about. 19, you know, I went down the same path, you know, um, involved in criminal activities in gangs and um, getting into into, into um, trouble on a regular basis, you know. Um, so, yes, I think MMA, you can say, saved my life. Uh, I got involved in MMA at the age of 17 when there was a local gym building in my area um, in Erdington in, in Birmingham. And one day I was walking past my mum um, on the high street and there was a gym building above the Blockbusters and she thought, oh, I should give this a go, you know. Well, I know the reason why she was saying it is to keep me away from my friends, you know. I was yeah. like, so yeah, I'll cool, I'll do it. Cause I was always good at fighting, you know, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll give it a go. And I was literally fell in love with it, you know. I think MMA was like the the father figure that I was missing, you know, the discipline, the hard work and what you you learn through MMA, not just the, not just the the fighting, you know. And I think that's what, what, I, what attracted me more to it, the positive uh, positive reinforcements I was getting from the coaches, from the teammates, saying, "Oh, you're good. You can do this. You can, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve it." You know, you never had that. Growing up, I never had that. Growing up, you know, it's always just about. I wouldn't say negative. It was more just more just about surviving, a surviving men mentality. Yeah. You know, and to have now people reinforcing your confidence and say, "Look, you're good. If you stick to it, you can achieve something." Did you now. start believing in that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I think over the time, the more I trained, the more I competed. Um, my confidence grows obviously, and you know, the more su more success, success I had, um, the more my confidence grows. You know, how hard is it going from what you went through losing your dad to then being involved in the gangs yourself to then cutting away and then focusing on you? 
Um, was that difficult at the start? It was difficult at the start because you know, it's difficult to like, if if you grew up knowing one thing and then suddenly you just do something totally opposite. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was difficult at the start, you know, but like I said, the, the positive reinforcements kept me in the gym, you know, it kept me turning up to the gym, showing up, even though I was getting my ass kicked because I, I was new to the gym. It still kept me there, you know, and I, I'll literally, I'll, I'll go from in the morning to the night. I was be there all day. I train in in the morning. I chill all day in the gym. Then I train again in, in, in the evening. You know, and that's that's all I was doing from age of like eighteen to to now. You know, and um, yeah, I think I, I credit I credit it to the positive reinforcements I was getting from the gym to keep me in the gym. Who gave you those positive reinforcements? Just my, my coaches. Um, what was their names? Um, Mark. I think he was one of the owners of the gym. Um, yeah, people like Vaughn Lee um, at the time. Silk. There's a few people at the, at the time that was reinforcing the, this in my brain, you know, confidence, confidence, belief. belief in yourself, and just a different way of life. You know, this 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 is not the only way um, there is to achieve greatness in life. And I think growing up, that's all I thought. Oh, yeah, I want to be a gangster <laughs> like my dad and all. And this is the way to get respect. This is the way to. Do it. But it's not, you know. And um, the more I dive into MMA, the more I dive into like, the mental part of it. The, the my world open up, you know. The more I travel, I've been to, been to. Uh, I love I lost count. I mean, country, countries I've been to because of MMA, you know, and me and different people. And your brain just open up, and the more your brain open up, you just can't so relate. You no, know, I can't relate as much no more um, as I could as a kid to like the street, you know. Because you've got sons at ten. Eight, eight, eight years old. Yeah. yeah Can yeah. you see the the like? Were your dad try to get you away from the gang culture then? For you being what you are now, future world champion, yeah. your son at that is a vulnerable age between eight, sixteen. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. they're starting it's, to it's, learn everything. Yeah. Like, but you've got that role model. You've got that role model attitude where your son is going to yeah. kind of look up to you. But you looked up to your dad when you fought violence would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, was the way you yeah, know? Yeah, I was way to like, try and make exactly. him proud, even though he was dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even it's, it's, it's a weird. <laughs> like looking at now, it's a weird way of thinking. You know, yeah. when, you, when like I said, at a young age, from eight years old onwards, it's like. Um, I could imagine my son going through what I went through as a kid, you know. Like, like I said, like I said, I was in a war zone when I was a kid, you know. Um, it was it, it became the norm, and it's weird that I, that I was able to normalize like shootings and stabbings and killings, and you know? I was just like, like a, a normal day in the life. And uh, when I was a kid, you know, which is looking back now, it's, it's crazy, you know. Yeah. It's how, mad. Yeah, how much difference is the gang culture from Jamaica, London? Birmingham because Birmingham's rife just now but yeah. what's the difference between UK gang culture and Jamaica do you think it's just the same just nah, 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 no, worse it, in Jamaica yeah, yeah way worse in Jamaica way worse they're, the more, they're, way, they're way more violent you know nothing you, to you, lose nothing to lose way more violent no cameras Um, the, the police is, is like the same as the gangs you know it's just like oh, yeah, it's, yeah yeah it's way it's way, <laughs> it's, it's way worse you know Um, yeah. also UK is still bad but is is there's different levels to different to I would say in African life and yeah, yeah I, I think as far as murders go yeah I think Jamaica is way worse for it yeah. What about your first fight? What was your first fight like? From a boy from the streets who think they can fight to then get into an MMA gym, you know, it's a different yeah, ball game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually done good in my first fight, my um my amateur fight. I actually mm -hmm. did good, you know. I think I, um I think I stopped the kid and knocked him out in like um two rounds or something, you know. But I was training up until I was training for like a year before that. But before that, my club, my 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 um gym had like an interclub, mm -hmm. which is like um, different gyms that meet up and basically have a, have, have a fight. And um, I, I won that tournament. That, that gave me more confidence in myself and more belief that look, I actually I might got I might have something here. You know, I might be able to to do something in my life here. And um, then from there, I went to I'm, I'm first amateur, like I said, and I got a victory. So I think every Every time I want, I want to work harder because I know, like, look, there's something there. You can actually do something. If you dedicate yourself and work hard, you actually could, you know. And I, I, I was more realising that the more, the more um, I compared. The more hard work you put in, the more, more belief kept growing. Yeah. What about when the UFC came calling? When was that, 2015? Yeah, I think about 23, 23 years old, I think. 22, mm -hmm. 23 years old, you know. Um, I, I was already the Bama. At the time, I was, I was a Bama champion. World champion, now? Eh? Um, yeah, for, 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 for Bama and... Um, my manager came to the gym one day and be like, uh, "What do you think about fight? What, what, what do you think about Brazil?" I was like, "What about Brazil?" <laughs> She's like, uh, "What do you think about fighting in Brazil?" 
Uh, I was like, oh, that would be good. Our like, just called and said, they want you to find Brazil in like three weeks, three, four weeks. I was like, start crying and shit. I was like, oh, perfect, you know, because yeah, yeah. like, this is like everything you work towards uh-huh. as a kid. And um, to come from where I come from, to now to be able to be in the UFC, um, it was like a dream come true, you know. Yeah, there's not many people done that so far, especially for them in the UK, especially with your record now. Like, you are the man yeah, in exactly. the UFC for the UK. It's absolute flying. Your division, I believe, yeah. is the strongest. Yeah. There's, listen, there's so many great fighters, but for your division, man, it's unbelievable. You lost, was it the first two fights? And f- One. My fir- I lost my first fight in um, UFC. Um, How was that feeling? Horrible, horrible, you know. Was that? Um, I hate losing, and is that, this is my... Just I work so hard and train so hard, you know, because I hate the feeling of losing. Um, but I think now I've turned it all, all into lessons, and now I understand why I lost, and I study why I lost, and um, I, I, I try to get better, you know, and then that's what I do. And I've, like, like I said, now in the 10th hour streak, and every time I lost, I always come out better, you know, um, even though it hurts, but I think sometimes it's needed, you know. Yeah, it's painful. Yeah. So you, then you went on, you won two, and then did you lose to Usman? Yeah. That's it. I, I lost the first one, one, two, then lost the lost to Usman. And that's um, the last time you'd lost. The last time I lost it, f- five, six years ago. And that um, went to distance as well. We went to distance. Um, so in, there's a lot in, of in, in his hometown yeah, as well, you know. Yeah, so. get it in, there, <laughs> it. <laughs> in his hometown, yeah. it's all good. Like I said, it's all yeah. it's always a, a lesson. And I think at the time as well, when I fought Usman, um, in the UK, there's a weird thing where it's like you get to like a level, then like, oh, you need to go to America to 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 improve. Succeed. Yeah, you know, you, you can't. You can't do it from Birmingham. Is there's no one there to train with? Blah blah blah. You know, and as a kid, you start believing this, you know, because the older guys are telling you this. You need to go to America. You need to, you need to do this. And I, I started believing it. Went to um, AKA um, from a camp for Usman, but my, my old camp was all to do with defense. Like don't get taken down and all defensive. You know, I was, I was going there with like a defensive mind state and. I went into the fight, that's where I fought. I fought it with a defensive mindset. I weren't thinking about what, what I need to do. It's more just about what he's going to do and don't let him do it, basically. You know, and that's not a good way to look at life. All, all come, all fine. You know, if you, you should go out there, do your thing and let let him adapt to you. Um, that's where I look at life as well. And um, so, yeah, I've since since that, I've came back to the UK, came back with my team that I was winning with. I was, I was winning with my team, came back with my team, um, fixed what needed to be fixed, fix, fixed and... Now here I am, 10 fights. Um, Back to basics. Back to basics, you know. Does that still sting, his defeat? Yeah, for sure. Every day, you know, and I think that's what drives me, you know, that's what motivates me to keep winning and I just hate the feeling of losing, you know. I think I put so much into it. Um, It always reminds me like I'm going back to where I started, like every loss I take, it's always like, oh, I'm going back to Jamaica. It's like, I put it in my head like, it's a, I make it bigger than what it is in my head, you know, and um, I think that's why I work so hard and dedicate myself so hard. So one of the longest winning streaks in Welterweight history. Yeah. So how do you friend. how do you end up losing the first two and four fights and thinking was there ever a stage that you were going through and you thought fuck this like maybe I'm not as good as I think or did you use the negativity and the losses as tools to then kick on and be on a great winning streak? Um, I I, I used it all to to motivate me. You know, I, I used my 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 upbringing, my everything to motivate me to be better. You know, and uh, that's just mentality. I always think. Is is way worse. Like I could have been. I couldn't be doing. You know, like you getting paid to do what you love doing. Um, you you enjoy doing it. Why 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 now? Um, like shy away from it. You know, and for that that's just a way I look at it. Really, just every last to take is always just about learning from it and growing from it. Obviously, it's a hard at the time when you're going through it, but you come to, like at the end of it. It's, it's a great thing, you know. Yeah, especially growing up in the, the tough streets of Jamaica. So if you have a loss, you're probably thinking it's fuck all compared to what people have to go through where you grew up. Yeah, the exactly. Killings and murders or robberies. So it's basically, I'm fighting in the UFC. I'm making some money. Yeah, exactly. I'm making my family proud. You yeah, know what exactly, I mean? Exactly. Which is a it good still thing. Hurts, though, the last <laughs> month, it still hurts. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. If you put it in that sense, then mm-hmm. it, yeah, it's not as as big as. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mm-hmm. I, I I get to I, I get to do this. I enjoy doing mm-hmm. it. You know and um, there's many people that's been chasing the same dream that I'm doing, and why why waste the opportunity? You know, and that's what I look at. Like oh, now, now I work so hard to get here. Why waste it? You know, why why not dedicate yourself to it? Why not train hard? You know, and that's why I never understand athletes that they work all the childhood to get to like a, a point in the career, and they start like slacking off and 
partying and drinking and like what, what's, the, what's the point why work so hard just to get here and then throw it all away yeah. and that's just where I look at you know gotta go for it all yeah you gotta, gotta uh, go for it all I'm, like, I'm, I'm one of these personalities it's all or nothing you know yeah, so exactly. I want it all and I'm gonna have it all you know did you believe you deserved to be in the UFC at the start or was there a certain I match was, or certain fight you realised okay I'm here and no, I deserve I always, to be here I always believe that I'll, I'll, I'll get there you know even though people tell me when I was young oh you're the 7 billion people on the planet was a possibility you get into the USA. I've heard that time and time again, you know, like you, you, you need to get like a, a, a plan B, get like a job in. I was like, nah, I never drove my life, you know. I always, um, well, I have no money, you know, but I always dedicate myself to this one thing. I thought, I don't need no plan B, you know. I truly believe that I, I, I would have made it and now here I am, you know. So yeah, all the naysayers man. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you beat some all the superstars of the game, like Cerrone yeah. and that as well. Yeah. How yeah. was that? Because you were young, twenty six, yeah, yeah, twenty. Yeah, like yeah. we got young, against when, when I first fought um, Daniel Cerrone. Um, this was my biggest, my biggest fight at the time. You know, mm -hmm. um, my first headline, I think, in the USA. It was in Singapore as well, halfway across the world. So it was a, it was a surreal moment. You know, but I was at the time I couldn't put it in my head as a surreal moment. It's more just about one. This is, there's one person in front of me achieve, to stop me from achieving my dream. And that's all I look at it the same way for all fighters. You know, it's just you and me and all the hype around you, all the media, everything. It doesn't matter. It's about me and you. And that's just the way I look at you. I don't think it can put like, oh, this guy's like, this great guy's been around for a long time. And okay, it, it will affect your fighting, you know, it'll affect the way you think of him. And I'll see him as a normal person and go out and compete. How do you go into a fight? How do I, get, how do I go into yeah, it? Yeah, how do you plan it? And before that, just before you're just about to start, because you seem quite a humble guy. You see yeah, quite yeah. other fighters that try and push buttons and kind of rail people up. Yeah, um, yeah. That looks like it consumes energy, but yeah, you're very calm. Is that your game plan? Yeah, yeah. Just stay calm, stay stay relaxed. And I think, like I said, once you believe in yourself... Um, let the fight and do the let talking. Let the fight and do the talking, you know. Like, mm. I truly believe I am number one in the world, you know. I've been saying it for a long time. And I know when I was younger, people were like, nah, you're not, blah, blah, blah. You, you won't make it to the top 10 in the UFC. And... You know, I've heard all this my whole career, you know, but if you, I really believe I'm number one. I truly believe it. And I keep proving time and time again, you know, I know they don't want to keep down to me and not, don't want to give me the respect of it, but what more can I do? You know, I'm, I'm long as got, long, long as I go out there and win, that's all I can do. And that's, that's all I'm focused on. Go out there, compete, win, and let, 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 let the world decide, you know? Yeah, you're bang on course though. Yeah, you're for One, sure. two fights away from being world champion. Like, Nate Diaz, one of the biggest in the game. You probably yeah. get Conor McGregor, you get Khabib, and then you probably get Nate. Like massive, he's been there yeah. nearly twenty years. Like yeah. he's massive name. When you get a name like that to come forward, even though did you know there, there wouldn't have been a title shot after that, or was that? Um, not not at the time I didn't because I fought in March. I fought Bilal Muhammad in March. Yeah. So I was like sitting around the house and my, my manager phoned me like three weeks after. Is that uh, the UFC just called? Do you want to fight Nate Diaz? In uh, May, but this was you know, the first fight, and I was like, I was like, Nate, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, perfect, let's get it done. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't sure because Nate's one, one of these guys where he'd be like, yeah, I'll fight you, then you won't hear from him again for like another year, you know. So, um, once, once the contract was signed, I was like, okay, perfect, let's go. We got to fight in May. Then, so I think I got injured, I think I heard through the grapevines I got caught or something, so we had to like, reschedule the fight for, for a month after, which is June, you know, and um, yeah, it was a uh, like I said, it was a, it was a looking, but it was a great fight, you know, great fight week. Um, he's a he's tough as fuck, you know. And he's a tough man. Yeah, man, he's, he's tough, man. He's, he's, known, <laughs> he's known to. He's like that's that's the thing, you know. They're known to be durable. They're known to be tough and um, fair play to him, you know. Because you won every round, fourth round. We've got to touch on the fifth yeah. round when he's clipped you, yeah, and he's wobbled you, man. How that's the first time you've been proper wobbled. Proper huh? wobbled, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How it's was a good that shot. feeling? Um, it was a, it was a, all, all I was thinking is don't shoot, you know, because. When it, it did the Connor, it, it tagged Connor, and Connor mm -hmm. kind of like panicked and shot um, for the takedown, you know, and ended up getting choked out. That's it, when it, when he beat Connor McGregor the first time, you know, and um, that's all the things from here. Just don't shoot for the takedowns, and I just go kind of ride it, ride it out. And I think my I show my 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 chin in that fight. I didn't touch a canvas. Um, um, I was still smart, still still aware of what to do and what not to do, you know. And so it was it was, it was a good shot, you know. I'll give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> How does it? Like coming up against him, he looks as if he takes some punishment, but he still always comes forward. Always, yeah. Well, what yeah. is that mentality? I don't know. I don't know. It just says it's a Mexican mentality, you know. So I, I don't know. I don't know. He's just a tough, durable just a guy. Just enough fucking nutcase, yeah, yeah. isn't it's he? It's fucking madness, you know. Yeah. And he smokes weed and shit. So yeah. I don't understand where 
Where is Cardio come from? And he's, he's not vegan or something. And he's vegan, yeah. you know. So crazy uh, bastard. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he, he and his brother does it, you yeah. know. But like I said, uh, his game I respect from, since yeah. that fight and fair play to him. No man. disrespect to him, massive name. But do you feel as if that wasn't really a step forward because he's long layoff, two thousand nineteen yeah. or something like? I think. I think if you're he, always going to beat him in my yeah, eyes. Yeah, I think he, even if he let's say he fought like a month before, mm. I don't think Nate, Nate beats me. You know, in in I don't think technically I'm just way. Way better than him, you know. Um, in, in for the technical aspects of the fight goes, and I think fight ten out of ten times, I win ten out of ten times, and I was believe I'm, I'm a better fighter. He's the biggest name, but I don't think he's the the most skilled opponent. I was thought, I was thought, you know. Yeah, but for the business side, that like, beating guys like that just yeah, gets your sure. name global. All his names are perfect. I want, I want all his yeah. names, and like I said, he's a he's a huge name in the sport. You put him up there, with, like him, Connor, like I said before, Khabib, Masada, probably. Um, yeah, all these guys, man. There was a mutual respect there between both of you. There wasn't really many. Nah, nah, it was, it was, it was cool, man. It was. Cool. I thought it'd be more like heated. Yeah, yeah, like heated and what well, you didn't say not much fight week, you know. Um, he's a uh, chill guy and just smoked his weed. Yeah. <laughs> chill, you know. I was yeah. like, cool. <laughs> How frustrating is it? Because I know you've had four or five cancellations. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if not, you could probably sit in here world champion just now. Yeah, for sure. How's that when you're ready for a fight and people are pulling out? Um. Pfft. I went for like a mad frustrating year and a half, you know. Um, I went from leaving 2019, having a great year in 2019, um, to 2020 being like, I was like, this is my year when we were champion. That everything scheduled it in to when I'm going to fight, when I'm going to fight for the belt, everything, you know. And um, I'd, I was headlining 02 with, with, with Tyron Woodley. Um, on the Sunday before the fight, the corona hit. It was like, called the fight off. I was like, fuck. It's like sold out in like two minutes. And, it was like one of, one of like my homecoming, and I was like, I was looking forward to like going out there and, and performing. Because the year before that, when Darren Till was headlining, um, I was like, I, 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 want, I want to do it, you know. And then Corona hit, and just like since that, just been like pff, all the way downhill. I got matched up like three times, three four times um, with Hamzat. Like that pulled out twice, I think two three times, and it was a wild. A wild year, you know. It's like sitting on the sidelines when you're fit, healthy, young, and just can't compete. You know how does that happen? Is that because after the Woodley fight, there not been a world title fight after that? Um, you were close to a world title yeah, fight. Yeah, oh, after me, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. After Woodley fight, I would have got, would have got a guaranteed yeah. world title shot next. You know, so to go from that to like now, um, still, still one fight away. But from go to go from that to you have to like restart your journey again and get back active again mm -hmm. after a year and a half it's a long time off in, in anyone that's a professional athlete career you know in football anything it's, but I kind of use that time I kind of like at the start it was like frustrating and annoying but I, I, I use that time to just do re, re, re fix my brain and just think you know what instead of like sitting around and bitching in the morning and moping about use the time to get better use the time to, to improve yourself use the time to to um, get better skilled um, physically and mentally and that's what I did you know and I've, I've proved that since coming back um, competing I've improved leaps, leaps and bounds you know and um, so yeah I think that the looking back now the time was a blessing to have off you know because it's rare that an athlete going into his prime get like a solid year and a half off just to train just to concentrate on, on training and improving and getting better you know and as before when, you, when you're in training camp you're not really improving you're kind of um, training for one person you know you're mimicking the game for this one one guy, but when you're free to train and do what you want, you can learn stuff and see what works for you, what don't work for you, and go from there, you know? Yeah, how was it fighting without any fans in March? Mm. Was it March you were fighting without fans? March, fans? March, March in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, it was good, I enjoyed it. I said after the, after the, the fight, I was like, I, I like that, I was like sparring, you know, you could hear everything clear, I could hear mm. his corner telling him what to do, so I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah. try. you know, it was, it was perfect, and yeah. I was like, oh, this is sick. Um, that was another fight though first round yeah. you, you smoked him all yeah, over yeah, him and then yeah. was it the second round to get stopped yeah eye poke eye poke, eye poke. Uh, mate I was, I was, I was I've never seen that yeah happen. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never seen that Neither happen. Right. normally you can you take eye poke and just like take a, have a little time off then come back to fight you know but this guy started crying and like fucking could you have got disqualified at any point for that um I don't believe if it was purposely if I'm like doing this then yeah <laughs> you know but I went <laughs> but I went yeah. I was throwing a combination mm. um and you stepped in. I got. I, I don't remember like eyeballs like, like dead and like, like lid. You know. Um, so how does that not get called as a victory if it's a punch basically? I think it has to go past two rounds. I think. Or does it? 
I think yeah, yeah, like a certain time in the fight before they can like go to the scorecards, mm -hmm. you know. Um, because but even though it's a, a, like a knockdown, like, a, a, like yeah, you won because he had to stop, so that you don't get the victory. How is that? I claim it as a victory, to be honest with you. But no, you, kept, you keep <laughs> saying ten, ten, ten. <laughs> I uh, claim it, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just it gave me the DQ. You know, I'm mm -hmm. happy didn't put it down as a loss. Cause my first loss in my career was the same. Um, when I poke, it's like a knee. The guy was coming off the coming off um off the takedown and I threw the knee before his knee was off the floor and he started like rolling around and um and gave me a loss for that you know it was like it's not a loss it worst case scenario it's a DQ you know not mm. a so that's that, that was my first loss in my career you know so where do you go now you get Miles to Dove um my plan is is to fight for the title you know I spoke to the UFC. Um, is it Masadal? Masadal um, Usman is the world champion right mm -hmm. now. Um, Masadal, obviously, from what happened in London yeah. and all backstory, if you know, that, that, but that's what the fans want to see, you know. So, either way, the cook could crumble. You either go straight for the title shot, then fight Masadal after, or Masadal first, Usman after. I don't think it matters. I think you know, either yeah. way is 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 but if you beat fights. Diaz, Masadal, then and title then, shot, it's perfect. And that's you know? fucking next level stuff. When that puts you in. Pound for pound, one of the best then? Yeah, for sure, 100%. Um, but he just keep making excuses and running and say he doesn't want to fight me, you know, so we'll see. Why? I don't know. Everyone wants it. I want it. The USC wants it. It's been out. Fuck the world, you know, Like, let's go, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm ready to go whenever, whenever he is. Because you know? Dana White was speaking about it yesterday. Yeah, I seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I seen it, I seen it. He wants it. So they want it, you know. I want it. Um, but like I said, you cannot force a man into a fight, you know, if he doesn't want to fight. Mm -hmm. the they've, lost so, they've lost a lot of fights as well Masadol he went through a spell there where everybody loved him he yeah. just looked great and then the kind of fires went out a bit as well yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean but yeah, he did. everybody wants to see the fight with yourself and Usman it's um, that's the life changing fight for yourself yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the game time won the world title everything you've worked for and then you sit with the belt man no, you're it'd thinking it'd be fucking amazing you know to have that and um, just for me and my team you know just to have it for the 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 kids that's coming under me as well mm. just to see like look you can achieve it coming from where I come from and um the background I come from and just like giving them motivation you know I think of we we've already read about uh, I'm I'm already a success in my life you know I'm, I am yeah. financially well off my family's happy my my son is healthy and obviously I'm I'm gonna win the belt I believe I'm really believe I'm gonna win the belt and but I do not I do not put my 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 happiness in the belt if you know what I mean you know but it's going to happen either way. Yeah, of course, because that's not where you're going to find your completion or yeah, yeah. Your, your old fulfillment. Like, see when you're going through your fights and stuff as well, does, is your dad still at the back of your head? Yeah. I always wonder, what, like, what, what what would you say, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I always like, ask my mom, like, what, 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 what do you think it would be like? Because, you know, it was in, like, involving, it was like a very, like, strict man, you know? He was like, so I always wonder, like, what what, what would it be like and what, what, would you, what would you say if you realise what I'm doing and what I'm achieving in my life, you know? Because, is a it's, it's a mad thing, you know. Yeah, it's sad that because I've lost family members to yeah, murder, yeah. and I lost my dad, but not to murder. It was them. Yeah. They came in, but the things that I'm doing, like traveling all over and meeting interesting people, that like, I would love for my yeah, dad to even be here today. Yeah, we all went for food with everybody just to be yeah, sitting there, yeah, same, man. cracking these shite jokes. Just that that's the hard part because yeah. then because sometimes you question. Like, I want and I only interview people, but I question it. Like, why the fuck did I do it? Yeah, but I do yeah. it because I kind of want a. I strive to be better than I know I can be. My dad always knew I had greatness in us. I never yeah. believed him when he was here. Yeah, but yeah. as soon as I go, that's when I start believing. It took me about five years after it because yeah. I went down a road of yeah, drink yeah, and yeah, drugs yeah, and yeah, violence. And, yeah. and then when you start achieving, you think, fuck me, man. Like, even when you won, when you won the world title, yeah. part of you wish, it was there, wish yeah, they were there, yeah, mate. Yeah, it's yeah, hard. Like, all, beating Nate Diaz, you're yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though you've got your team, you still wish... Yeah, you see them and yeah nah, nah, do you know what I mean yeah. and that's the hard part is that what gives you fuel and fire to keep going to keep yeah. as if you're still trying to make your dad proud yeah exactly I, I use that as motivation and mm. I use that to um, to make him proud of me you know to make him um, the way he was for me he was a great dad you know he was a great provider for the family he's a great um, a great human being you know but um, so yeah I, I use that like I said to be just like him and look after my whole family and um I just try to make him proud, you know. Is that um, where you get the dedication from? Um, I believe so. I'm a mum, you know. Um She must be proud. Yeah, yeah, she's she's, she's very she proud, must be you know. Proud, man. She had two sons that, that my brother does it as well, you know, Fabian. Mm -hmm. Um he's fights for um for Bellator. 
How old is he? He's 28, probably, 27, 28. How yeah. much did that competition both both years when yeah, you were yeah. young? <laughs> he was young, when he was young, yeah, it was like back and forth, you know. Yeah. But um, like I said, I'm proud of him, you know, for what he's achieving. And he, cause he always copied what I did, you know. When I, when I was on the street, he kind of like went down the same path as me. And when I came to MMA, he got involved in MMA, you know. So I'm very happy now to be a positive role model in his life, you know. Um, yeah, that's a good thing because <clears throat> I've had brothers on Mikey who does the fighting and stuff. Yeah. Um, his brothers would have followed him anywhere he went as well, but he went down the life of crime. Yeah. And they followed him, obviously went into MMA later in life. And that's the difficult thing is to be a role model for the right reasons. Like if you went to a prison, no doubt your brother would have went yeah, to see their yeah, yeah. keep the family name or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You're fighting for nothing, basically. Nah, you're fighting yeah. over postcodes that people don't give a yeah, fuck about. Yeah, anyway. you don't fucking put own house in the, yeah, in the postcode, you, you know. But when you're yeah. young, it's like, it's all, it's all in your brain, you know. Mm. It's just, you think it's a, Easy way to make money. He's a, your friends are loving it. Your girls are loving it. You kind of just like fall into this trap where you think this is it. You know this this little area that you live in. Yeah, that's the world. You know, and it's not. You know, but since I've been since traveling, like I said, I think that's what helped me. Like open open up my 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 mind. You know, my my brain into different stuff and different different way of living and how different people think. You know, but at the time when I was young, I truly believe that this was all it was. This <laughs> this life yeah. was all it was. This little area, this postcode, these gangs and drugs, and this is this was this was life, you know. But and that's uh, that's the scary thing about life. Like people are stuck in a loop where yeah. they think it is normal. That like, go back to the Jamaican days. That like, there's so much potential there. Yeah. So yeah. much potential in Birmingham, Glasgow, yeah. London, Liverpool, and they just go down certain routes where they they never ever find their true potential. Yeah, yeah. And I think they say that like, the richest place on the planet is the graveyard because people are going with books that they never wrote, or songs that they never sang, or fights that I never thought nah, of nah, for real. there's just so much potential everybody has whether that's whatever that is it's to find your potential so when you started finding it now you're feeling good going for world titles yeah, yeah. people will be looking up to you going if he can do it I can do it yeah, and exactly. that's what it's all about so there's not many UK fighters in the UFC nah not, that's, big that's Paul succeeding. Craig as well from Scotland who's flying just now um, Dan Till yourself Till, would yeah. you ever go up a division and fight Dan or do you think he could ever um, come nah. down battle um, of Britain kind of thing Um, that was going for it back in the day it was both like going back and forth back in the day to cause I was saying at one time it was both welterweights and I was both the same weight class and um, but it never it never materialised yeah. and the US was like it wanted to happen but let's like grow the profile a bit bigger and then make it happen in the UK you know but you end up Moving up world, but um, moving yeah. up the middle eight. He's still a mega star. He's a funny yeah, bastard. Yeah, yeah, he knows funny. how to promote a fight. Nah, he is. He's a good yeah. lad, man. Since, since, <laughs> I love him, <laughs> bits, mate. Since, since um, he's moved up, I've kind of like mm. been sport to him Friends now. now. He, yeah, he's all right, man. He's a, he's a he's a good guy, you know. Do you see everybody in your weight class as an enemy? Um, not enemy, just a a person that's blocking me from achieving my dreams, you know. And mm. that's it. Uh, once before. It wasn't once a fight, and it's fine. Now we can be friends, you know. But before that, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I have to yeah. go free to get to real to feed my family, you know. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it, you know. And uh, it's no, it's no personal. It's all, it's all business. It's all good. How was Joe Rogan podcast? How was that? That's was, a massive platform, number yeah. one in the world. How was that feeling? Um, it, it was wild, man. It was. Um, I was, in, I, was, I was in Vegas, manager for me saying, uh, Joe wants to be on his podcast, but he moved to Tex- Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he said. Uh, Come to come to 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 um, Austin, Texas, and come to my show. Okay, him and Dave Chappelle was, was was doing a show the night before, um, not not before the podcast. I was like, oh, sick, Dave Chappelle. That's <laughs> class, man. I was like, oh shit, greatest yeah. comedian all time. Mate, mad. I was like, oh, yeah, sick, Dave Chappelle. So I went um, went to went to, went to comedy show. It was a great comedy show. Then I was like, I was then he messaged me saying, ah, oh, come backstage. Dave Dave wants to meet you. So I went backstage. This is like a mad night, bro. I went backstage and they was like, "Oh shit, you don't you don't come through, guy." <laughs> I, was like, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But I grew up watching Dave Chappelle, you know, like in the black community, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. in the world anyway. But especially in the black community, like Dave Chappelle was like, legend. "Yeah, he's a legend," you know. And um, so yeah, it was a wild night. We ended up um, just partying all night and then had the podcast in the morning, you know. But like I said, to to do stuff like this, like they like Joe Rogan meet Dave Chappelle and. To go back and tell the guys where I grew, like where I grew up, or the guys, the kids in the gym, what I've done. This is all just motivation for them, you know. To like look, look what he's doing. Like I, I want to do that as well, you know. Even better, I want, I want to do better than him, you know. And this, this is what 
this is what I want, you know. So it's a it's a mad life and a mad three sixty yeah. to life, you know. Does that feel so real? That like, because of the guests, like, even speaking to yourself, I watch you yeah, fighting yeah. in the UFC. I watch yeah, oh, a big mad. UFC fan, and then it doesn't feel like it's, it becomes work, but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem real. Yeah, like, it's, it's you, mad. you can feel a little fucking bubble. Yeah, for sure. I'm just scared <laughs> in case someone pops the bubble. Nah, it's <laughs> like, and you're thinking, bro, fuck, I'm I'm back up in Glasgow, and I'm, I'm doing fuck over. Yeah, like, I'm the same. That's what works so hard. It's all good. Yeah. It's like so surreal moment. Even yeah. that night, yeah, I was, um, good to, to after party. It was like me in the car. Dave should, Joe Rogan's driving the car. Dave should probably in the front seat. <laughs> I'm behind Dave Chappelle. Uh-huh. Then my, um, my manager. I was like, what the fuck? Is like, uh, how, how much Dave Chappelle just Joe Rogan driving to like after party yeah. right now, you know? It was like a, a surreal moment, you know? Were but, they two puffing like fuck? Yeah. Because <laughs> <Really? laughs> yeah. like, I think it's legal there, anyway. Yeah, it's legal, it's legal, it's legal. Yeah, they love their weed, man. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Is, um, where they stoned out their box. Yeah, the good lads though, man. Yeah. Humble, you know? You think they'll be like big headed, and but they're not. They're all like good lads, you know? I think that's what I've taken away from them. Like, look, you can still be a good person. I met, I met guys before like, the celebrities and just like dickheads and you know, all like the rude and the thing that are big you know but like yeah, the first day of anyway he was like humble as fuck you know he's a fucking global superstar yeah I know it's mad it's, it's, so it's uh, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan so yeah, massive so, as so well Joe, you know so yeah. you're sitting in the back seat thinking what the fuck yeah I think you what I said to the manager what the fuck like, <laughs> how many he's driving like, he's, uh, like a Tesla he's like driving uh, his, Joe's driving his Tesla um, Chappelle in the front seat and shit I was like mate this is a mad night a random night, you know. Was it cracking jokes, Chappelle, yeah, yeah, yeah. or was it just no? Nah, just crack, different... cracking, cracking jokes in the car and just like just a normal guy, you know. I was like, mm. fuck, that's mad. Oh, that, that's sick. How <laughs> was that? Because did you get what time was the podcast at one? Uh, about one o'clock. I got in about um, let's say about four or five o'clock. You I fucked. Like, oh, I was fucked. I was like, oh shit, I got to do the podcast in the morning. Uh-huh. So I got to Joe Rogan. I was like having like fucking Red Bulls and coffees and just trying to stay up, you know. But it was a it was a good good podcast. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great fucking thing, man. Like that's next level. That's bigger than TV. Yeah, 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 for sure. He's like one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Oh, you know? he has the biggest. He, even his fucking studio, his studio is fucking amazing. You know, he got like a new one. I thought it was the one that he had before. We can like had like a gym in there and shit. I was like, oh, let's train. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. no, nah, my other studio, you know. Um, but yeah, even his studio is like because new, he can nice. scrap. Yeah, he can yeah, scrap yeah, as well, can't he? Yeah, he's good. He's like, we were showing him like psychics and shit and shit. He did taekwondo, I think he did yeah. for, like, for like years. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, he's a good guy, man. What does your friends and that say? Is there any, does that, you got any jealousy towards uh, what nah, you're doing? No, 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 not from my friends anyway. I got it from, from like random people, not from my, from my friends, you know. But this is the thing, all my friends now are doing great things, you know. They all got like businesses and stuff that they're, just, they're, they're doing, you know. So when I started doing MMA, I think that kind of like, Help my friends, just they want to do great as well, you know. So they start like some I got like a, like a care company, one got like a care company for like old people, one got like like a building company that would do like kitchens and bathrooms and other stuff, you know. So yeah. all my friends are all succeeding in their own way and in, in, in what they're doing, you know. Yeah, a strong network is, is important for yeah. having good company and people who believe in you instead of the naysayers. Like, can you imagine surrounded by somebody every day telling you you can't do something? Ah, uh, mate, I had it. I had it though, when, when I was young, especially when you're young. That's like when you're young yeah. and you have like an older guy telling you like, look, there's like seven billion people on the planet, and everyone chasing this one dream. I didn't get to. I like the possibility of you achieving it is yeah. low. This is this is what it told me. You know, I was like, but I thought, nah, like yeah. it's gonna it's gonna work. You know, like I really believe that it's, it's gonna work in my heart. You know, and. Let's just, just work towards it and block everything out. Just work towards it. Just show up at the gym and do put everything I could, I could control. I did it, you know, and that was it. Does your mum watch your fights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did she, she watch she, them? She, she, watched, she, watched, she, watched, she watched the last one, you know. Um, cause, um, what did she say? Oh, mate. She's a Jamaican woman. Yeah, she's Jamaican. Man, um, she's, like, she's, she's like proper, like, yeah. like Jamaican, Jamaican, yeah. you know. Um, she was watching it. So when I, when I, when I got rocked by, by Diaz, <laughs> <laughs> when I came back, I was like, Mom, what did, what did you do? Like, what, what, what happened when I went? She's like, I opened the window. I started screaming, help. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom, you got uh, it. Uh, so, yeah, I started screaming, help, help. Uh-huh. Blah, blah, blah. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my heart was in my throat and stuff, you know. But you can imagine, so... It would be crazy watching his son fight, you know, it would be mad. Yeah. But like, I got a kid now that's like he's eight years old and mm-hmm. he does jiu-jitsu and um, kickboxing, you know, and I couldn't imagine him fighting, you know. <laughs> does he watch your fights as well? Mm-hmm. How does that then, to ingrain that, to be a winner, to be potential future 
UFC world champion like, for such a young age because yep. you, you're you a late starter as well. Yep. 17, 18. 17, 18, yeah. It's like, late. Yeah, very late for martial arts. Yeah, very for people late, starting you know? at 11, 12. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 for example, like, for example, football. Let's say you start football at 18 years mm-hmm. old and now you're in your prime. Like, it's like, doesn't it's, work. It don't work, you know? Yeah. So um, uh, I put it down to like, oh, it's my hard work. Um, my, my 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 natural gift and God, you know, and uh, I'm a high believer in God and, and and a path, you know. So yeah, he's a. I think for my son, he's he's, he's proud of me, you know. He tells me all the time, and like all his teachers know me and everything, and he's always telling me like what the kids say in his school, and um. So yeah, that's what makes me proud and makes me work hard, you know. That's the thing that want you, like we spoke about. You don't want the bubble to bust because once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. Can you enjoy the journey though for what you've achieved, what you're coming through? Because everything seems to go fast, doesn't it? Yeah, seem yeah. you're doing well and you're meeting amazing people. You don't seem to take it, and it's when you go home, yeah, you're lying in your bed, you think, "Fuck, what did just happen yeah, there?" Yeah, it's mad. Yeah, yeah. The same as like Joe Rogan experience, the same thing. You know, like because mm. you're in the moment, you're not really thinking, "Ah, oh, it's yeah. Joe Rogan there, Chappelle." But when you get back to your house, you're telling your friends. They're like, no, you didn't. Like, they should probably like, bro, look at the picture. Like, I was yeah. with him in the car uh-huh. and that. But they don't believe me, you know. But it's a it's a mad life. And like I said, I work hard and put a lot of time into it to make it work and um, to achieve my dreams. And I think as long as you put the work in, you, you, yeah. you, your bubble should keep growing, you know. Yeah, because you're a good guy. You do a lot of knife crime stuff in Birmingham as well. Yeah. Let's yeah. touch on that. Um, so I've... I've I've, like I said, I've kind of been involved in, in knife crimes, um, gang crimes and stuff like that from a young age. And I've lost many friends um, to being either stabbed or shot from doing it and from being being a victim of it. You know, I've, I've seen both sides of the, car, the coins. And um, even just last year, I've lost one of my friends from getting stabbed on Father's Day in his neck, you know, and bled out um, on, on the street. And um, yeah, I've... I've Start a charity, me, Darren Till, um, Jimmy Manuel, um, about knife crimes, about helping the youth um, that's involved in gangs to 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 get better, you know. So Jimmy came to me one day and um, he mentioned it to me. So oh, what do you think about doing like a charity? I was like, perfect. I was, I was thinking about it. I just didn't know how to do it, you know. And he's like, oh, so a good idea to get Darren involved as well. I know he'd, be, he'd been stabbed before, I think, Darren. Yeah, he was, yeah. Um, yeah, they died. Yeah, yeah, I heard. And he's like, okay, let's talk. So what's to Darren? And he's like, yeah, perfect. I want to be involved as well. And um, they were sort of like brainstorming like how to do it. Then we got the USC on board, spoke to the USA about it. They were they was on board straight away and now um yeah, it's basically done now. They're fund they they're funding it. Um so the aim of the charity is to partner up with the police as well and a, a charity called Legacy. There's like got a few different locations around the UK, one in London, one in Liverpool, and there's one in Birmingham, you know, and uh we're basically mentoring the kids and um just like talking to them. Um, training them, the show potential. They will, will will pay for their membership from uh, um any gym that they, they want to go to, like martial art gym they want to go to for a year, which is like a like a scholarship basically. Um, and yeah, just that's the aim really, just trying to trying to give back. You know, we're trying to the kids that grew up how uh, we grew up, show them a different way of a different life. Yeah, know? that's an amazing thing, mate. Like that's what it's all about. Yeah. Like even though you won titles, your son's yeah, proud, yeah. your mum's proud. Like. Trying to give back is where you find a bit of balance and you find, yeah. okay, I'm really doing... Dan Tull's, like I say, he's a fucking legend. Funny bastard. I'm good friends with Dan now. Like, yeah, he's a good legend. He's just a good funny legend. bastard. Like, he's got the watches out. He's got his yeah. fingers in every pie. He's just yeah. a kid from Liverpool yeah. doing his thing. Doing his thing. You just, know. Yeah, you have to respect it. You know, I know yeah. that people hate on him and um, just haters and stuff, but you have to respect it. You know, if I'm, if I'm, I, I think anybody that works hard to get to it, to get to where they want to get to and mm. achieve it, you know, I never, I never hate on it, you know. I always respect it, and I think that's for me anyway. That's that's what motivates me is the is the giving back part of it, you know. Because when I was younger, it's all about me, me, me. I want to be like, I want to be rich, want to do this, want to do this, you know. But uh, when you get to like a point, you got like money, and but you're traveling by yourself, you're doing shit by yourself. It's not as fun, you know. It's better when you can like give back and help people. Yeah. And, um, that's where from my happiness now, you know. But that's the hardest thing to do is to try and do something legit. Like anybody can rob a bank, anybody can yeah, do yeah, bad yeah, stuff, yeah. anybody can stab anybody. Yeah, yeah. But the hard thing is to actually change your life, yeah, make yeah. your mum proud, your son proud by doing the right things. That's the hard part. That ain't easy. Nah. That's why no, not everybody can do it. Exactly. So that man who's talking about seven billion, you're lucky if a thousand people, you're one in a thousand chance of doing it if you focus, stay focused. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. You, seven billion, that's weak people. How many times do you sit in a pub and somebody says they could be a contender, yeah, they could yeah, be yeah. a footballer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they're sitting yeah, in their only 30s yeah, yeah, and 40s yeah, yeah, where if you know all your mistakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. why not do something new nah, exactly. and focus on that? Exactly. Like, your life's not over. Exactly. There's always something to give. Exactly. There's always something it, to give. Exactly. But it's always, like I said, in your life, you know, have naysayers that 
I think, like I said, God believe in God. I believe that God put him there to test you, you know, to, he put him there to see if you really want it. You know what I mean? Do you, do you truly believe what you're saying? I think that's why these guys come in your life to try to derail you from your 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 path, you mm -hmm. know, and I just use that as uh, as whatever, you know, I don't, believe, I don't, you just because you think that way that doesn't mean it's going to happen to me, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I've always been, always been that way, been my own man, you know. That's how it's best to do things yourself. Because if you tell someone your dreams and ambitions, they've not got the same focus nah. or vision, so they speak you out of it. Yeah, they'll yeah. eventually. They can't see it. Yeah, you know, they can't see what you're mm -hmm. what you're seeing. So you're telling them, oh, listen, I'm gonna open a business, but they're they, they tell you all the negative reason why you can't open a business. So, so, <laughs> so saying, oh, yeah, if you, if you try this and do yeah. this and to help you with it, which is it's, it's the way the world the world is, you know. Yeah. I think that's why you gotta be solid mentally and. Um, stay focused on what you want to do um, put a plan towards it and just achieve it Is everything's it? about risk that's it somebody's got to be world champion that's somebody's it. got to be the biggest podcast on exactly. the planet and somebody why, has to be why not me why not yeah. you you know we're um, on bath why not you fuck them all mate <laughs> fuck them all why not man it's yeah. going to happen you know and like I said I can tell from the way you work that you're, yeah. you're serious about your thing and so am I you know and why can't we be, let's say, for our next Joe Rogan and next yeah. world champion? It would happen, you know? Exactly, man. Why not? You've got to believe. Like, I just want a bit of freedom. I want to be happy, but able to travel as well and meet yeah. great people. And yeah. Do you know what? I'm actually doing that, but I don't feel as if I'm there yet yeah, because I've yeah. become greedy to yeah. it. I want bigger and more. Yeah, yeah. Which is good, though. It's yeah. a good mentality to have, you know? Mm. It's, it, that wanting more and even though you, you achieve so far great stuff, you're always going to want more, you know, which yeah. is which is good, but you can't let it be your main, you can't, you can't put your happiness into it, in it, you know, like, yeah. I don't put my happiness into the belt, you know, but I'm going to achieve the belt, I know yeah. I'm going to achieve the belt. To get but, some happiness you know as well, I mean? <laughs> an extra, an extra you know? new sprinkle of happiness. <laughs> but I'm going to get it, yeah. you know, but I don't like, if I don't get it, I won't be really, like, devastated, mm -hmm. you know, I, I will get it, you know. But that division, the welterweight division, solid. Yeah. The money fight, Conor McGregor, there's a chance that he would ever come up or you go down for that big money fight as well? Um, possibility, there's a possibility to it, you know. I don't feel like I'm just, I'm, I'll be too big for him though, you know. I'm like a natural welterweight. I don't think Conor's fought like a natural welterweight, you know. Everyone, every time he's fought a welterweight, he's either been a lightweight going up or he's never been like a welterweight, you know. So, mm. um, yeah, there's a possibility, there's a possibility, you know. So that's a mega fight. Yeah, that's the next. That's the biggest fight you could have in the yeah, UFC. For, for UFC, like, for that star power go. Because he believes that he, he can win three belts if whether he wins another belt at the division he's in the now. Because he's called out, yeah, uh, Usman as well. Usman, yeah, I think. Like if you get that belt and he calls you out, man. Yeah, that, that's we've got the same manager as well. So well easy. <laughs> yeah, we've got the same same uh -huh. management team, so that that'll be easy to get made, you know. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that'd Ever. be wise. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, not so for now. Everybody always mentions him in the, the UFC. What yeah. do you think his fight next fight coming up? Do you think he'll win? Um, yeah, for, um, if he made the right adjustments, it, it depends. You know, he's made like over hundred million, and it's difficult to you know. Give me hundred million, <laughs> I'm yeah. dead. You know, so, you know <laughs> I've seen you. I've fucking seen you eating cakes just now. He was eating cakes today. <laughs> so, um, less his motivation. You know, uh -huh. less his motivation. I want him to win for sure. You know, I, I think I, I like. People that do great stuff, you know. He, he has done great stuff. He won two about in the UFC. He's made hundreds of millions coming from um, Dublin. So I like to see him win. Fucking you know? amazing what he's done, yeah, man. He is a superstar. Like talk shit about him and say that he's cocky, That's blah just blah pure blah. Jealousy. Let him Everybody thing, would you know? want what he's doing. Exactly. You, do you know, know what I mean? That's exactly. what we're all working towards. Exactly. He's exactly. done it. He's the guy done it in the space of five six years. Obviously grafted behind yeah, the yeah, scenes, yeah, but yeah. to then create whiskey businesses, yeah, yeah, clothing yeah. brands, fucking he's got gym gym stuff, food like. I respect yeah, that massively. Play, he's a know. massive name. And I think it should it should beat Dustin, you know. If he's focused, if it comes in like let's like say then I think Dustin beats him. But when he's focused, he's good, you know. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, listen, people forget that it was two weight world champion the yeah, first in the yeah, UFC. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? It's but like, then he, he, you could see the mobility, you could see the way he was moving. Yeah, he, he looked yeah, yeah. like a he looked different person. next level. Yeah, did, did. Then when the money comes in and That's then the Taking a year out, man. two year out, like how how hard can it be when you've got a son and a daughter now? You've got your son like to get to a certain level. Say yeah. you made a few million, then. But you, listen, you, give anyone hundred million in yeah. the bank, 
It's gonna be hard to fucking yeah, get I'll the same probably person. back on the, I'll be back on the gear, mate. Because <laughs> everywhere, mate. I would have been podcast no, right on the fuck, yeah. fuck everybody, mate. Like, it would be difficult yeah. to be the same person, you know. So. Let's start looking down on everybody. <laughs> All the shit that we're talking, fuck everybody. Yeah, it's madness. That's like people like Mayweather, yeah. People like that's made like hundreds of millions, yeah. 800 million in, in his career. And it's still focused and never drinks a day in his life. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's a weird, man. Diff- different people, you know. So. Fair play too, but anybody can get there. You can. Anybody can get. Whether well, I don't visualize to be that wealthy, yeah, though. I yeah, believe yeah. it could mentally could fuck you up, man. Like, but I don't know, man. Do you ever do you ever worry that your fire could go out? For like fighting wise and um, like hunger. Eventually, it's gonna like like it's like anyone, you know. Eventually, you, you're gonna get to an age where you won't be able to compete, you know. And um, in 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 any sport, fight, fight sport is a, is a short career, you know. So I think it's right is is good now to make the right investments and um, the right connections now, you know. So when you do retire from the sport, I, I can I'm still be well off, you know. How many years do you think you're going to give up? Um, I'm 29 now, so five uh, years. Uh, five. Nah, nah, 35. I'm, that's my prime, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never retire, <laughs> mate. That's probably like late thirties. Late you're going to go sure. 38, 39. I think, though, the people who go older yeah. find it more difficult to quit. To quit, yeah. But if exactly. you won the world title 29, 30, yeah, yeah, true. Then you've true. got to def- you've d- yeah, do your true, defenses. True, but true. Yeah. My, you, you, my, would my, you struggle my to quit? Um, I don't believe it's so. It's such a weird question at yeah. such a young yeah, age. No, do you know no, what I mean? I, but, I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't really think that far ahead enough. Yeah. I was like quitting, but uh, I, know, I know there's going to come a time where. I, have, I can't do it no more I'm too old my body's not the same I'm not reacting the same and I won't hang around to get like not tapped by young guys you know like <laughs> yeah. so there will become a time that's I'm making the right choices now in my life and doing the right things now so I can I can walk away um, comfortably you know Cause I think the reason why people stay around um, sport or fight game is because either, like, either they blow all the money on this young party and then it, enjoying life and then they got older oh shit I need money you know mm. to, to, to carry on my life and they want to stay in longer you know so um, yeah I think as long as I made the right decisions now I'll, I'll be able to to quit. make good investments not quit now. but like yeah. retire but there's great money in UFC now it's not like back five years ago ten no. years ago no. you look at some of the greats who fought then they were fighting for buttons yeah, to yeah. be fair that I believe the UFC fighters are still underpaid yeah, for sure for definitely sure. and I think that probably will change I know a lot of people has yeah. been speaking out lately that I think John Jones and that's wanting mega money for the yeah, fight, but yeah. and rightly so, man. He's yeah, fucking... so you should, you know. I think you're putting life at risk. You should get paid for it, you know. Mm-hmm. I think um, the, with, with the with the UFC, because the new sport as well, it's like been like 25, 30 years old. So I think it's still kind of like figuring out how uh, how I was done. You know, I think that when the NBA first started, NFL in America it was the same kind of thing. The, the guys was lower paid and. There's like a blackout and they had to like change the structure of the paycheck, you know. I think like it has to be like over fifty one percent go to the athletes, you know, and I think in the USC is is, is opposite, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's different. So we'll see. Yeah, because it's usually the guys that are putting your life on the line. Life on the line for it, you know. You're still getting paid for them, you're still working for a corporation yeah, that's yeah. That, like you say, still try to figure it out. But I think if enough people come forward and speak, yeah. then they will start making it because it's a fucking billion dollar yeah, for, company. It's do you know what I mean? Another day for like four, four billion, I think yeah. it was four, four, six, four to six billion. So it's all right, sweet money, money mate, there. Uh, <laughs> bastards, there's bastards, mate. Different fucking money there, yeah. you know. But yeah. um, I think oh, eventually, um, I don't think in my lifetime it will, it will change drastically, but it will change. But eventually, I think it'd be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a growing sport. It's one of the most popular sport in the world right now, and. Um, it would definitely change. What about who would you have loved to fight? I know you want Usman for the belt, but is there any get any fighter um, you've ever watched? GS, GSP, you know, like for Walter White, he's like the he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, he's like a legend. Think he'll have a fight again though. Mm. He beat Bis- Michael Bisping. Mm-hmm. He came back like uh, a couple of years ago and beat Bisping. You know, so um, mm, I don't think none of the UFC if it does anyway. I think it's probably like. Try that YouTube boxing out. Everyone's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's involved. Throw a couple hundred yeah, grand. Now we all fight any kind. YouTube boxing. So that, that's how, a great. How way. does that? How does that annoy you? You like a fighter, a true fighter. Yeah. Trained all their life, for then a couple of kids coming in from YouTube and making more yeah. money. If it doesn't bother me one bit. Like I said, I I, I don't watch another man pocket. You know, like fair play to them if they want to come in and they can get money to 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 box. 
it doesn't bother me. I don't know why people hate on people that do, that do good, you know. I don't care. You do your thing and I'll do my thing, you know. Yeah, see, I'm the same. I see it as opportunities. Yeah, that I, I, don't, I think it's bringing more money. eyes as well to boxing, yeah. I think, you know. Mm -hmm. I think boxing's kind of dying out a little bit. But I think people um, are mean, now starting to say it's becoming a laughing stock because yeah. there's so many of these fights now nah. and it's been getting boring. Like, I want to see Joshua and, yeah, yeah. and Fury fight, out, like, the big fights. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's difficult. I just don't feel as if they get made as fast as the UFC. Yeah, You've got yeah, one yeah, belt, yeah, yeah, yeah. the best fight, the best. I think, I think that's what's killing boxing, you know, the one, the one division is like six different bouts. Mm -hmm. See, so you don't know who the champion is, you don't know. It's difficult to understand, you know, which is, yeah, see, like I said, it's only one belt. So you, you know exactly who the champion is, you know, the route, the ranking system, so you know who should go next. And so it's a, I think it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a new sport, but it's all the kids now that I know is going into MMA, you know, like back in the day when I was young, all the kids are going to like boxing, football and different stuff, you know. So um, I think, think for, for MMA, in the next like 20, 30 years, um, it's going to be a huge sport, yeah. you know. Where do you go from here, brother? What's the plans for the future? Obviously, world title fight, yeah. hopefully this year, starting next year. But what's the plans? Where do you go? Is it just... Um, right now, for my goals, for my career was mm. um, my, my, my plan is to be world champion by um, end of this year, early early next year, you know. Um, by March, I'll be world champion. Um, and then from there, um, I want to be going on one of the greatest of all time to ever do it, you know. Um, and just that's, that's my goal. I was focused... Um, goal at a time. For the first goal is to be world champion. Then I'll I'll, I'll go from there and recalibrate and see 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 what's next. You know, and like I said, make the right right investments, my money, and um, yeah, just enjoy life with my family and my friends. Do you ever rest? Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you rest though? Um, you seem like the kind of guy who's constantly <laughs> wanting to train. No, I try and I try and even like now I'm meant to be having like time off, but I'm still like I train once a day. You know, I I, I enjoy it. If I don't train, I feel horrible. My body feels shit. My mental, my mentality feel like, ugh, like, like shit. You know, so I enjoy like even like running. Just go for a run. It has to be like a hard session. Just go for like a, like a, like a jog and um, hit a bit of pads, a bit of bag work. Just nothing, not nothing heavy. But I like to sweat. I like to do something. You know, mm -hmm. and just work towards my goal every day. And if you want, if you want to be great, you have to. You have to work towards it every day. You know, you can't just think, uh, you know, what one week I'm. A, party one week I'm gonna train. You, you you never achieve it, you know, and just just work towards it day by day, one goal at a time and mm. look around ten years time, you fucking you achieve greatness, you know. Yeah. See because you've been through so much trauma as well, did you ever go and speak to anybody, like a counsellor, a therapist? Um, Never, and I should uh, I fucking, need, <laughs> fucking need to, but I, I, I have it. I have it, you know. Because yeah. even some of the shit I've told like my like exes and like my um um just different, like, you know, yeah. uh, they can't get it, you know. Like, I mean, it was normal, was like, I've seen, like, people been shot and all that, you know. Yeah, it's it's like, fucked up. See, I've never seen anybody, yeah, yeah. you know, I've lost you countless I mean? family members and friends to murder. Stabbed it just feels everything. fucking, like, when you have a discussion with my friends, it seems normal, but the more I'm speaking to people and interviewing yeah. people, I'm starting to think, maybe I'm a little fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. Like, I'm, I'm the same uh, way, you know, like, some shit is like, yeah. like, you like, girls always, always tell me, like, you're not, you got no emotions, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, I just don't see what they see, see as emotional. Mm -hmm. Emotional is not, you know, but yeah, it is. I definitely yeah. probably speak to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I can watch people fight like fuck. I've, I've seen a lot of bad shit in my life. Yeah, yeah. And it, I don't know if you become cold towards it, but then I can watch, I can listen to a song on the radio and start crying. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> and I think, what the nah, fuck? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> what the fuck's happening? <laughs> Yeah, I ain't got that kind of that kind of yeah, that kind of emotions in me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but would you ever go and see somebody? But do you um, think that could maybe I wouldn't say change as a fighter, but then maybe lose that kind of you've kind of got like a barrier up where you're just solid, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. You break um, it all down. You might get into the ring just want to start cuddling yeah. someone. <laughs> <laughs> balance. <Yeah. laughs> I, got, I got a balance. Yeah, I don't you know. want to <laughs> that, um. I know for about it, you know. I know, I know for about it. If it's keep doing me, you know, it doesn't affect my personal life. It doesn't affect me in my career. So, uh, I don't really for about it to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I think you're on a great path anyway. You're doing the right things. Yeah. You're not. You're very humble, very well spoken. You're just doing you. Yeah. You're leaving a legacy for not just yourself, but for your son and other people to look up to you and go. I'm going to do that. If you can do it, anybody can do it. And what that does is leaves a blueprint. Yeah. You've got Bisping in that world title. 
Dan Tulls yourself got to give big Paul Craig from Scotland I hope he gets maybe a title shot next year he's flying as well like, yeah, there's yeah. people there like, even though violence doesn't solve anything but it's the training the exercise to battle, balance the mindset yeah. to then feeling good and then get into a, a normal like, all the gangsters I speak to every fucking one you probably only get two or three yeah. we're going to a ring and fight somebody yeah, the rest yeah, just yeah. all talk shit you still use weapons and talk yeah, shit. Yeah, I'll yeah, edit yeah. that bit out, not yeah, me. I don't want my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but they do the talk shit. But why? Because they're weak. They're yeah, scared. People yeah. always ask me the question do you ever get scared? I say no, because what I see is weakness. Yeah. A person who owns a gun or a knife is yeah, a weak we, man. Yeah, exactly. They're weak is, as fuck. Is, is. Just, they're so broken within. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to feel pain anymore. Yeah, so they'll yeah. hold a weapon to try and protect themselves. But anybody that goes into a boxing ring, yeah. for any sort of fucking martial arts or yeah. whatever it is, any combat sport, they're tough bastards. Yeah, I used to train in a gym in Glasgow called the Grip House. Looking at the people who fought there, you would never think anything of it, but they would fucking tear you apart because they were so nice and humble. Yeah, it's like yeah, you, yeah. all my friends Which get, is mad, you know, because I got yeah. guys in the gym the same way, but on the street, they're like, what's this, you know, that, yeah. like, you're, fucking, you're a good fighter. Yeah. Why are you so scared of confrontation outside the gym, mm -hmm. you know, which is, it's like a weird thing. I don't, why, I don't, why is that? I don't know. I always wonder, like, it's weird, you know, like, some guys are sick fighters in the gym, but on the street, like, yeah. a, a guy can come and, like, bully them, and I was like, like, you, you can batter him, like, what you doing, you know? Yeah. I don't know what it is, like, a weird mentality, you mm -hmm. know? It's, 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 because they're so good, but they're, it's so, they're so humble. Yeah, they don't yeah, need yeah. to prove anything. To prove it, yeah. It's the ones who want to fight and shout, and I, I see weakness. The loud ones, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the loudest, it's the weakest. Nah, for all, for all, I, I believe that as well, you know? yeah. but I think, like, for, for me, I think my upbringing helped me with my fighting career, you know? If I was, like, um... The, the no fit aspect of it and seeing a man as a man, you know, I don't really see, I don't really build him up to be something that he's not, you know, I've, I've been in many situations where, where I have to rely on myself, you know, and I think that's what helped me my, in my fight career where you have, to, you have to rely on yourself and um, believe in yourself that you you are who you say you are. Cause there's nothing to figure out if you ain't. Yeah. You know I mean, if you really deep down your heart, you're not all you say you are, it's going to get figured out, you know, and like I said, I've, I've been in situations where I've proven to myself that I am who I, am, who I said I am, you know, and this is why I, got, why I got my belief and this is why I work so hard and where the reason why I'm at, at where I'm at, you know, because I, I truly believe it, you know. Do you enjoy getting hit? Nah, I don't know no one enjoy getting hit. Uh -huh. you know, There's some, fight, some people I've spoke to in there. Dan Tull loves that, he yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. He loves it. He's like the bastard, he says. I don't think, I don't think, yeah. <laughs> like, I've seen him on fights when he's telling them to hit him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, You've got to be psychotic, I believe, yeah, like, to want to fight. Yeah, yeah, a little but bit. But even though you're sitting here, nice, nice I don't guy, mind it. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it. To but. go into a ring and be willing, listen, it's life or death. Yeah. Do you have to switch off that like oh. your mum's watching, your yeah, son's yeah, watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all, all that's gone, you know. And what do you see when you see the guy? Um, Kill? Mentality, like I'm yeah. going to fuck you up. Yeah, that's it. I just see my future. You know, I think I, I have to get through you. I don't, I don't, I don't see him as a person. You know, I see him as like a a bit of life, mm -hmm. basically. You know, I don't. As a fucked up mentality, <laughs> you, know, <I> know. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't see you as yeah. like a a being. You know, I just mm -hmm. see you as legs, arms, and body. You know, that's it. Another step towards your goal. That's it. That's all I see as. You know, for anybody watching, brother, that's maybe thinking of going down a life of crime, or maybe that's in a life of crime. And it's they've still got a chance to get out. What advice would you have for them? Um, if you've got a chance to get out, then you should. You know, there's more, there, there's more to life than than the streets. You know, I've like I said, I've I've lived it, I've seen it, and I've I was brought up in it. You know, there's the the end to it is you see a prison or death. You know, if you're really doing it, if you're really involved in it, um, see you see a prison or death. No, I can't name um. There's not many millionaires off the streets, you know, from from where I'm from anyway. There's not many that's gonna retire the millionaire and like back in the day and the old gangster movies. That's not that's not how it works. You're gonna go to prison evil I can I got friends that's doing like thirty years, you know, he's he's just twenty twenty he was like twenty one the other day and he's like thirty five years in prison. Thirty five years twenty one years old. Like, mate, it's like it's, it's a different life, you know, he's not it's not what you think it is, and all your friends that you think that are gangsters, they're not. You know, when when the pressure when the pressure comes, um, and people start snitching and snaking you, and you go to prison, and your friend is having sex with your girlfriend, and it's just it's a snake world, you know. And why would you want that? Why why would you want to make your 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 family proud and your mom proud and provide? For, that's a that's a real gangster to me now. A guy that can fucking buy his mom a car and provide for his family and do what what he wants to do, you know. So that's 
if you want to be a gangster, that's the gangster you should be, you know. You can go take your family on holiday and whenever you want and um I want to work hard and 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 a, and a man with principles and morals, you know, and that's it. Yeah, that's a badass mentality is to do something in your life and try and help out the people who's helped you when you had fuck all. That, yeah. That can be the difficult thing. Yeah. The real people that help you don't, like your family, not know um, friends that you think are your friends. Mm -hmm. Some of them ain't your friends, you know. I've been in a situation where I've seen my friend snake my friend, you know. I was like, mate, I thought you were friends. Yeah, so yeah, there's no loyalty uh, in that nah, game. No, no loyalty at all. It's, it's difficult all just thing. You know? Because obviously you've got a great story. Yeah. World title this year, next year. Yeah. And you get potential book deals, documentaries, films like. I love looking like all that um, documentary. You know, I always love to do it, man. Yeah. I'm trying to find like a camera crew now. I can like yeah. go, go back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Show like Jamaica. My dad, was, my dad was buried in Jamaica as well, so I love to like go back to his grave and everything. You yeah, know, with so. your title. Yeah, my title, man. Yeah. It's, it's gonna. Yeah, it's get that happen, sorted. Yeah. So that that I believe it will happen now. Speaking to you, yeah. But you know, everything's to do with vision, law of attraction, belief. You already told me you're, you're you already believed you're number one. Yeah. That's all. You've already completed that. So when you eventually do one, it will feel normal. It will feel fucking normal. <laughs> and it does, you know. Yeah. Like even that now when I'm just winning, 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 it just feels. After the finish, it's like, <laughs> it's like. Do you feel underrated? Do you feel as if you're not getting the credit you deserve? Especially going um, on a nine one one yeah. streak. You say ten one, but yeah. let's go for ten. Uh, but, fuck it, ten. but to go for <laughs> ten one one streak, do you feel as if you're not getting appreciated um, enough? Yeah, for sure. For what I'm achieving, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm getting the the height that I should. You know, from 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 what I'm doing and what I'm achieving, coming from coming from where I come from, not many people from UK. Uh, especially from Birmingham anyway in in the UK that's doing what I'm doing you know and um, to be the number one number one fighter now in the UK um, I'm ranked number two in the world and um, achieving what I'm achieving I therefore feel underrated but like I said I do not I do not care you know I I, I, I like I said if I believe that I'm going to achieve it my aim is just to provide for my family achieve greatness and do my thing when it's all said and done I'm not going to look back when I'm 70 be like oh, you know what I wish they fucking liked me I won't, you know. I'll, I'll be like, look, my my mom's retired. My my son is 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 nice and paid for, and um, and I'm living good, you know. That's all that matters to me, and that's where that's why I look look towards, you know. That's the, the best future. way because that's all outside noise anyway. Yeah, as a relevant. So sometimes it's good to fly under the radar as well because yeah. then when you eventually do become king of the fucking yeah. the world, then. Everybody think it's all kiss ass, it's all fake. Yeah, it's all and you, fake. You can get sucked right into it. Yeah, yeah. and it's easy as well to yeah. get sucked right in. You know, all the, the limelight, all the girls, and if you, if you, all the girls like you, <laughs> <laughs> if you call <laughs> the girls <laughs> like you, they don't like you. They like you for who yeah, you are, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but See, yeah, he's an object. I've seen men that's like they lose their life to the fame and the, yeah. the hype, you know. But but that's all bullshit. Yeah. That's the fake. That's the fake end. But you've got your head screwed yeah, on. Sure. I think I think once you you dedicate yourself, that will all come as out. Don't chase it though, you know. Yeah. I'm not waking up every day chasing hype and mm -hmm. um, all this, and I'll just do my thing, and that will all come. If I, if I, if I control, what I can control. Everything else will come, you know, and that's what I believe, and that's what I've been working out for my life. So yeah, keep doing it. How does it feel to be number one in the UK? Um, it feels good, you know. Yeah, Coming from well, a guy that told me that it's seven billion people in the world, yeah. what's the possibility of you getting to the USA? What a miserable bastard he is, <laughs> man. <laughs> I can't fucking what remember, I can't remember his name. Yeah. I would have fucking said his what name. Name, <laughs> name. Fucking miserable cunt. I can't fucking remember his name, yeah. mate. But um, <laughs> yeah, to come from that to now number one in the in the UK and um, number two in the world is what a journey, you know. What 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 a story and what a mm -hmm. life. And um, from Jamaica to now. Um, USA, it's a fucking, it's a fucking mad, great story, man. Great, like, that is life, a great you know? story. Like, that has potential films, that has potential yeah, documentaries, facts. books. Like, to becoming where you came from, especially losing your dad, and then yeah. fighting the streets of Birmingham, London, to then changing your lives to being world champion. Like, that's that's what I, it's like a rocky fucking film, yeah, kind of thing, in it. It's like, my, also, I'm like, I'm proud of myself, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's a uh, like. Belt or not, I'm a fucking winner in life, you know. I've, I've fucking, I've turned it around, you know, and um, I could have went down the same path. I could have been dead all seven life in prison, you know. Even like the other day, I was supposed to, um, one of my, fa my father's best, like, is where I am, man, you know, and he's doing life now in prison. He's been been in this since I was 14 years old. He's been, he's been in prison, you know, and I spoke to him the other day. Cause I supported him for like 10 years, and for some reason, for my mum, because him and my they're always like close because I'm um, young and um, I was born to like talking about my dad and stuff and when you're 13 years old you ain't got really um, 
like a clue who your dad is. You kind of know, but you don't know. You? Yeah. you know what I mean? It's so It's like a dream. Yeah, so I'm like, asking him questions about my dad and shit, which is like weird. Now, I'm a big man now, you know, mm -hmm. but you still like want to know and you just say, now, yo, you'd be proud of you and keep doing what you're doing, you know, and that gave me even more motivation to want to do more, you know. Yeah, that's what you need. Everything's about timing. You yeah. probably didn't want to ask those questions. No. Back then, like, now you're becoming... You've succeeded. Yeah. You've become the man that you knew you could be. You've become the man that your dad probably knew you could be. Mm -hmm. Now, your dad was involved in life culture, but it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. My uncles were involved in bad things, but yeah. I loved them to death. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't believe in wars, but my granddad fought in World War II. I like, still yeah, fucking yeah. loved him. Like, he's obviously seen potential. Now, like, if your dad could have stayed in the gang culture in Jamaica, yeah, yeah. but you wouldn't be where you are now. No. You could have been dead and your dad could have still been exactly. alive. Exactly. Like, Imagine if they left us in Jamaica. You know, let's... let's like... Uh, um, when it came to the UK, he got remarried, you know. He got married to um, a woman in London, and still brought him from Jamaica to the to the to the UK. You know, For most men that I even now that I know, they'll fucking get re get, they'll get remarried and forget about like his kids in Jamaica yeah. and his, his, his ex wife, you know, in mm -hmm. Jamaica. I got new misses and new kids in 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 London, you know. So I'm saying his morals and the way he thinks. Um, is what I think, you know, my family man. Family man, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what, it's, it's, it's about your family, about your kids, and um, yeah. That's the best thing, brother. But I'm telling you what, mate, you're going to be world champion. I'm gonna. fucking buzzing for it. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. It's going to happen. Because your next fight, when you get, we'll go. Yeah. Abdullah. Yeah. We'll go, my brother. And next, shit, in, yeah. next interview as well, the battle will be right. Yeah, right fucking right there. Right here, mate. <laughs> you know and that cunt who says about the seven billion, mate, <laughs> he's getting a picture right up here, right, that yeah. negative <laughs> bastard, mate. But um, would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Um, nah, just thank you for for the interview. Um, to all my sponsors. Um, Who's your sponsors? Oh, I've got Mantrix, got um, Junus CBD. Um, got a management company as well called Kings. Um, I've also started man managing like athletes. Um, from my gym and from other gyms and uh -huh. um, ar around the UK, like young kids, give them opportunities and showing them the lessons that I learned from the game, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've got a great team behind me that's helping me with that. And yeah, it's a it's a positive thing, you know. I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, mate, future world champion. You're already believe it, but for coming on today, brother, and telling your story, listen, I'm genuinely backing you. Thank and you. Can't wait to see you win that belt. Good man. God I appreciate you, it. Thank you. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.